Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant. And in this Canva 2.0 demo and review, we're gonna be looking at the top five new features in Canva 2.0 that you should be paying attention to. And when you stick around to the end, we'll do a quick pros and cons of Canva 2.0, as well as some pitfalls to watch out for as you begin to use this for your design. So if you're completely new to Canva, go ahead and stick around and then make sure you check out links in the description to in-depth Canva tutorials on everything from how to make YouTube thumbnails all the way to lead magnets and presentations. So in this particular instance, we're gonna kick things off with an elements overview because they've changed the way that you access the elements inside of Canva. So I've opened up here a sample lead magnet that we have for one of our companies. And so you'll see, you still have all of your usual template options. What's really changed is the elements function. And inside of elements, it's a lot easier to find things via search. And this is a pro and a con. So the pro is, I think the search has gotten a lot better, especially because when you do searches, you can look by photos and you can also look by graphics. What I find to be the downside is what I liked to do in the past was go through these different illustrations and you know icons and just browse through to get ideas, which you can still do to a certain extent if you're paying for the premium version. However, if you're not looking to pay for graphics or you're not looking to pay for the premium version of Canva, which is only like 10 bucks a month, then you're gonna find that the number of free icons seems to have shrunk. And I believe this is just part of their business model with the redesign. They really want to encourage people to sign up for the premium version. So you can see here, all of these icons that have the little crown are free because I have a Canva for work account. Otherwise they'd all be paid. So it is a lot harder to find free elements, but you still will be able to find them if you go through search. It's just the illustration and icons redesign. You're not going to find as many free ones and you still have your text elements and your backgrounds, you know, your uploads, and you can also have folders and then you can connect some other apps or use some special things that they now offer. What I want to do now though, is now that we've gone over kind of what's changed with the elements and the little asterisk on finding icons, I want to show you how easy they've made it to share things between different canvases. I think this is the biggest feature they could have given us. And it's one of the things that I know held a lot of people back from using Canva. So here's what I mean. If we go over here to folders, first of all, you can create folders. If you have a Canva for work account, if you don't, you can create just, they just limit the number of folders you can create. But what's really cool is we can go down here and we can click on designs and this is available for everyone. And this is going to pull up all of the designs in your account. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this copy page. And what's really cool now is you can bring designs over from a different canvas. So let's go ahead, we'll click on this. And let's say I want to redesign this blog thumbnail for Pinterest. So I go ahead and choose the blog thumbnail that I wanna redesign. So I'd click on that and it's gonna ask if it's okay to upgrade. So this is gonna happen with all of your old designs. And now it's brought in all of the elements. Did it resize it perfectly? No, it didn't. But what's really nice is now I can quickly redesign this entire blog post thumbnail for Pinterest. So I'm just gonna speed ahead, jump ahead here so you can see what it looks like when I'm all done dragging the elements. And done. So obviously not the best design, but as you can see, it's a lot faster to kind of change things for different platforms, especially when you can just bring in designs from a different platform and quickly, or from your blog and quickly redo them. So now what I want to show you is if I wanted to share this over on Pinterest, which is what this design is for. And this is another cool feature that they've added. And this is the ability to share and schedule posts. So this isn't something that's going to replace your quick sprout or Hootsuite. If you know, you're really heavy user of something, uh, buffers, another big one, but what we can do here is instead of clicking on download, we can come up here and you can see that we could share this directly to a variety of platforms or like uh, to LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, you know, Facebook, and, or we can go ahead and click schedule. So I'm going to click schedule and then select which page I want to schedule. And this is going to be page two, the one we just made. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. I'm going to click schedule and we'll go into the uh, scheduling calendar here in a sec. So you can see how it works out. 
It's gonna prepare the design and automatically load us up in the scheduling side of Canva. Now, one of the kind of annoying things is it's actually really, really hard to navigate to this. I found that the easiest way to navigate here is to try and schedule a post and then save this particular page as a favorite so it's easy to come back to. So here I could go ahead and add my caption and then go ahead and select which platform. So I could do Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I could do all of them at once. For this instance, I'm just going to select Pinterest. What's awesome is it's pulling in my boards, which is something not all schedulers do. So I could say this goes under sales funnels tools. I can go ahead and enter my URL here if I want a URL to be shared with this pin. And then I can go ahead and click add to queue or I could say post now. So I'm gonna say schedule and I'm gonna say I want it to go out on the 16th at 11.15 at night for some strange reason. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And I'm going to schedule it, it's gonna prepare it. Post successful, let's edit the post schedule so we can take a look at this. So what I did with this particular instance is I told Canva exactly when I wanted it to be posted. What you can do is create a queue. So here, as you create images in Canva, you can just say add to the queue and then it will automatically drop in that image to be next in line, whatever schedule you set here. So if you wanna be posting, let's say we don't wanna post on Friday or Saturday because nobody's really looking, and maybe we don't wanna post in the middle of the day except on Thursday for some reason. So if we create a bunch of designs on Saturday and we add them to the queue, they'll be scheduled in this particular order and they'll be posted at these times. And you can do this for all of the platforms that you connect to Canva. So it's pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and X out here so we can see our calendar for Pinterest. We see the post we just did. Maybe I don't wanna do it, do it anymore. So I can go ahead and click edit post. Post now, make any changes I need. Or in this particular instance, cause I don't wanna actually post it, I'm gonna go ahead and click delete and you have a content calendar for all of your platforms and all you have to do is click between them up here. And so that I think is the second coolest thing with Canva, the first one being able to pull in images and designs from other canvases. And then this scheduling tool is absolutely amazing. I think it can definitely replace a lot of paid versions of what people have been using. So now I want to quickly go over a feature that's not exactly new to 2.0, but it's something that I found a lot of people didn't realize you could do. And that is you can actually present a presentation right from inside Canva. And it's fast enough where I've actually been able to present you know, sales pitches and not have any lag problems over Zoom. I'm not sure how it would work with Skype or Google Hangouts, but I know from personal experience using it with Zoom has been great. So all we have to do, I've just loaded up a bunch of blank templates here from the present, and then all you have to do is go ahead and click present, and then select your options in terms of how you want the slides to load. I'm just going to do preview here because this has some paid elements. It's cutting off because I'm doing this on a widescreen. But now you can see, you can do an entire presentation from right inside Canva. You don't have to download it into a PDF. You don't have to try and download it as a PNG and put it inside of a PowerPoint anymore. You can just directly present from Canva. So I'm gonna go ahead and X that out. So not a new feature, but one that's really cool that I found a lot of people didn't know about. And finally, I wanna talk about bringing your static designs to life with GIFs. So here is another set of Pinterest pins. So what I'm gonna do, instead of clicking download, we can come over here and we can actually scroll down to animation. So we can now animate these. And we can select an animation, so it could be fade, it could be pan, block. I'll just go through each one of these so you can see them. We'll zoom in here so you can see all the previews of it slide and then of course simple and this you can choose medium fast or slow the only downside of this feature is it automatically pulls in all of the pages so if you just want an animation of one or two pages you're going to have to duplicate your design and then delete the pages you don't want and then download the animation and for file formats you have mp4 and then the standard format 
So that does it for the five awesome features. I know one of them was one that isn't necessarily new, but hopefully you learned something out of this and can see the possibilities of what you can do with Canva. So now what I wanna do is go over three pros of 2.0 and three cons of 2.0. The first pro is the graphic search function. I know I talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but being able to search, even if you're not paying for Canva for work, it's a lot easier to find graphics when you know what you are looking for. The Second big pro is being able to pull in other designs. With just a click, you can bring in elements and designs that you've worked so hard on into a new canvas. So things are no longer trapped inside of that one design. And I know that's been a big drawback for a lot of people. And it's actually why I originally left Canva for a while because I got so tired of having re to redo my designs over and over again every time I re hit that 30 page limit inside of my designs. And the final one is just, they actually listen to feedback, which is nice. Like this new update shows that they have actually listened to people and they're completely with Canva 2.0. So now for the downsides. The very biggest downside for me has been speed. Using Canva 2.0 with a connection speed of 60 MIPS, I've actually had some issues with how fast the designs load, something I didn't have a problem with in the past. Using 150, I'm just fine, everything loads quickly, and I would hope it would. Now, the other big drawback, I'm actually gonna go over to this design, is that for some strange reasons, the lines for text elements don't seem to appear. So you can see right now, I'm clicking and dragging, and lines are showing up. That's great, that's what you wanna see. However, when you start pulling over, you notice no lines show up. So if I wanna make sure that this is perfectly centered with text above it, I can click and drag, but as you can see, if it's a line left, okay, great. If it's a line right, okay, great. But if I wanna click and drag and make sure that it's aligned on both sides, it's not there. I'm personally OCD. That might not be a huge issue to you, but I can tell you putting together this particular PDF took forever because I wasn't able to just click and drag things to make sure they were lined up and the margins were proper. And the third con is the loss of free assets. So even though it's easier to find free assets, we've lost some free assets. Also, they used to have a collection of elements like this where you could click and drag an image inside all of those elements have seemed to have disappeared. And when I try and upgrade them to the new version, they don't work. So now I'm stuck when I create product images like this, I can no longer just click and drag images into the laptop or into the phone. I have to manually size things, which is really hard when the grid lines aren't showing up properly as I just showed you. And even though we're a little heavy on the cons here, the final con is that there are still some problems with outages. Just the last week, I needed to change one word in a design for a client and they wanted it done within 20 minutes. And it should have something that should have taken just three minutes to do wound up taking 24 hours because for whatever reason, the design would not allow me to save and download it. So this is just a hazard of using an online service like Canva, but 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, you're definitely not gonna have that problem. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and actionable. If you got some value out of it, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more Canva tutorials and demos and walkthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth tutorials on how to be successful marketing yourself and your business online. So make sure you check out the links in the description to other Canva tutorials. I've done tutorials on pretty much everything under the sun that you could ever want to do with Canva, as well as a comprehensive overview that goes through even more in depth of everything you can do in Canva. That'll be the first video link in the description below the timestamp table of content. So until the next video, keep building the business you love.